welcome to the final day of the first annual PDGA Championships. That's right. Today we've got one final round that all the divisions will play and then a final 10 after that for the top players in each division. Uh, it's going to be a big day out here. We're going to let you hear from these guys. We're going to let you see some live action. We're going to show you some more of the IDGC. But before we get started, let's see some PDGA player talk. All right, we just caught up with Sarah Hokum. She is this year's Vibram champion. Awesome, nice job, Sarah. Thank you. Now, coming in, having the championship at the uh, Vibram, big tournament. How does that make you feel coming into this tournament? Uh, makes me feel like I've got a little confidence in the woods. You know, I mean, last weekend I was at Women's Nationals in Texas where it was wide open, and then <laughs> I'm back to the woods, and I'm like, yes, par fives to the woods, I'll take it any day. All right, so you're pretty so, much on yeah. tour these days, right? I mean, yeah. you're traveling around pretty mm -hmm. much full time. Yeah, it's uh, it's fun, it's hard, it's great, it's scary, it's all these, it's great. I enjoy <laughs> it, I really do. I mean, you get to do what you love, and it's hard, but it's great. Well, I know you're forced with a challenging field. I mean, you came into the women's field, and there's already so many big names in the women's field, and you're definitely carving out your spot. You are saying, I am here to stay. So we can't wait, you know, to see what you do at this tournament. We are hoping yeah. to see you up there at the top, maybe in that final 10. Yeah, it's a tough field. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Well, this is Sarah Hokum, and we are at the IDGC. Thanks so much, Sarah. Good luck this week. Thanks, Liz. All right, we've been able to track down Cam Todd here at the PDGA Championships. Cam, how's things going? Things are going great. Yeah, how long have you been in town? Uh, I got in town yesterday morning. So you got a chance to maybe practice some of the courses? Or? Uh, of course I did. I actually came um, probably two weeks ago and did a little, little prelim practice. All right. Do you notice any difference in between now and then? Um, yeah, there's a couple of trees gone. It's starting to you know, look a little nicer in the fairways out there and hopefully yeah. it continues to go that way. I know these guys have been working hard to keep this course nice for you guys. Now. Um, what, what's your next plans is after this event? Are you going to take it easy for the rest of the year? Or? Yeah, pretty much, pretty much. Yeah, relaxation time? Yeah, most certainly. Cool. Well, we look forward to seeing you play. Hopefully, we'll be able to cover you a couple of holes. And best of luck to you. Awesome. Thank you very Thanks, much. Thanks, Cam. Thanks. Well, all right, here we are with Nate Doss, world champion Nate Doss. <laughs> and I tell you what, you came out here with some heat in the first round, shooting a 58 on the Jackson course. How did you make this happen? Um, well, it, the Jackson course, you know, can either be your friend or your worst enemy. I think today it was um, my friend. I just kept it in the fairway and got off the fairway a couple of times, but for the most part, kept it in the fairway and was able to make a few putts and, and ended up shooting, you know, course par 11 under. So I'm just happy with it. Um, you know, it's a long tournament. We have two very different courses yet to play with Ed and Warner. So I'm just, I'm, I'm hoping, you know, we still have guys coming in now. So I'm just hoping I'm near the lead and looking forward to the weekend. Well, absolutely. I know there's only one other 58 that I heard out there. So right now you're on the top. Hopefully you can maintain it for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, I'll try. All right. That's Nate Doss, your current world champion. All right. Well, all right, it's time to check out the W.R. Jackson course here at the International Disc Golf Center. This is the longest course here. It's a par 69. It plays about nine or about 9,500 feet. It was designed by John Houck. It features Innova disc catcher baskets. It looks long, it looks wooded. It looks like there's gonna be a lot of par fours and par fives. Let's go check it out. Hole number two at W.R. Jackson offers a wide fairway that moves left to right. It's just under 500 feet. You do have to throw a placement shot off the tee pad hopefully staying far left so you can have an easier approach to the basket. The shul is very punishing here. You want to stay in the fairway, avoid the rough. From the landing zone on hole number two, there are multiple options offered. Every line, however, is going to be very tricky. The green is guarded heavily by trees along with the approach to that green.
finishing out the back nine at the WR Jackson course is a 354 foot par three. Now this hole offers plenty of challenge. It is, it does move left to right and there is a very low ceiling. Players here are gonna be forced to keep it low and keep it out of the shul. opportunity for those who are brave enough to take it. This is a gentle hyzer. It's under 250 feet. The gap off the tee pad is tight all the way down. It's about 15 feet. And the green is on a severe slope. And it slopes right into a yellow OB line. you got some birdies on the last two holes because this is 616 feet long. It's another technical placement shot. Now this, your first placement shot, although you're going to leave yourself a little bit blind, you might want to land a little bit before those two big guard trees up there. It's only about a 30 foot gap to get past them, but boy, if you hit one of them, you can go deep into the shul. Well, all right, look at the landing zone approach shot on this 616 foot hole. Now from here, a player can take many lines. They are all guarded. That looks like the big sweeping hyzer line is the most open. However, players are gonna have to land soft on that green because it does slope away quite harsh. There are a few things that'll catch you up, but for the most part, you better come in soft and stick your landing. This is a big finishing hole for the WR Jackson course. It is a par five, 716 feet. And if you can see me all the way down here, this would be an optimal landing zone. However, I think most players are gonna end up a little bit short of this because there's some tight lines off the tee pad. Well, all right, the green is still a ways away from me. It's all of at least 200 feet and down a narrow tunnel that only gets narrower as you go. Players are going to have be forced to play smart here, otherwise they're going to end up walking away with a bogey. All right, this is the last green that you are to see on the WR Jackson course. I tell you what, it's tight down there. It's been a long 716 feet to get to that bucket, but it's pretty open, it's pretty fair. Just loft it up in there and hopefully you can make your putt. Oh boy, that was 9,300 feet of disc golf. Tight, wooded, tough, technical shots. That's the WR Jackson course brought to you by John Houck. I tell you what, it is as long as it is hard. I hope you all enjoyed it. Well, Sunday morning. And Liz, you didn't think it could get any more humid, but what do you know? You're from the north. Yeah, that's right. We don't have this weather down or up where I'm from, Billy. I well, tell you, this has been an exciting round to watch so far. Cam Todd is going to be on the tee. This is your lead card. We are on the WR Jackson course. And man, it has been frantic all oh, morning can long. Can just let one go here? It's going to have to come in soft. Oh, what a great shot by Cam Todd. Oh, like, instant breaks, going to be Liz. safe. They have flaggers on this hole. How convenient. These are two holes that play back to back. They're really short, but there is a lot of danger. Well, we started this round. Nate Doss, Wiki, Ricky Wasaki tied at 35 under. Cam Todd and David Philbert at 33 under. We are now on hole number 11. You're right now. Nate Doss should be on the deep pad now. He has been playing up and down all day. He was tied for the lead, but he did suffer a little bit early in the beginning nine holes, taking a bogey at hole four. That's a little early, Liz. He's safe, and he's got, you know, he's, he's only got about a 20-footer up here. That's what these guys are looking for. But, man, you can see the danger all over this green. Oh, yeah. You know, the only thing they want to be is safe here. 
Well, now we're going to have. Ricky Wysocki's on the pad now, and I tell you what, his scorecard is amazing, Billy. I'm look, taking a look down at it. Seven birdies so far out of the first ten holes. Oh, and he uh, did not penetrate through there. He's sitting great right now. We're at hole number 11, coming off a of hole 10. Ricky Wysocki sitting at 42 under with a three-stroke lead over Cam Todd. All right, now Dave Feldberg's up on the pad. He has definitely suffered from the last hole, taking a seven on the par five. Uh, you know, I've never actually seen Dave play golf like that before. Well, what Dave will do right now is Dave's probably going to birdie these three holes. He is a street player, and sometimes when it blows up on him, he does explode, but he knows how to get it right back. We're going to let him come on down to the green. This is a sketchy, sketchy little section of the hole of the course. 11, 12, 13, we're going to bring to you. 241 foot, number 11. Let's go down and see if we can get some birdies. All right, here we go. This is Ricky Wysocki. He looks like he's going to make the smart play here. He's already got the lead. He doesn't want to throw it OB. He well throws done. that black JK AVR right under the buck. He's going to take a part. He's got seven birdies okay right now. He's okay. Yeah, he doesn't need it. All right, let's see if these guys can can any of their birdie attempts. Now they're moving in. I'm not sure if Nate or Dave's going to be out. I know Cam is pretty much parked on the backside. Well, it looks like Dave's ready to... Start working off that seven. He did put his mini down. And he's inside of 20 feet. This should be money, but he has a couple little guys in his head screaming right now, Liz. All right, I guess Nate is out. He's walking down to his line. Now, the green is the hardest part of this entire hole. It is sloped, and it's sloped right to the OB line. If you don't make your putt, you can risk rolling OB. Seems calm and collected, Billy. He seems like he has a good chance to make this. Money right in the heart, and Nate had a good bit of the eagle on the hole before it gives him a stroke, and he is trying to chip, chip away back at Ricky Wasaki's lead. All right, Dave Felberg here. This should be right in the heart. He's going to turn that seven into a six right now. All right, just like that, he's starting to chip away. Now Cam moving in, now Ricky Wasaki, the hottest player on the course, costing this group a star frame. All right, we've got Cam. He's lining up to his putt. I thought he was a little bit closer. He is, does have the benefit of not having the OB behind him. Wow, that was a knee shaker. I thought that was going back out, and then, you know, when those come out, that's going to roll, and that could have easily went OB. Oh, you bet. All right, Ricky Wysocki tapping out his three. Let's yeah. see what these guys have to offer on hole 12. Oh, well, Cam Todd being kind to us, he was waiting on us to get set up there. He's one of the quickest players you'll ever meet. Oh, boy, and he just hit the tree right off the tee pad. That's not going to be too opportunity for him. On this hole, a three isn't bad. There's a lot of OB. There's a lot of penalty strokes you can take. It's short. You want to get it on a course that's this long, but... Well, it's 285, but the OB is abundant as the creek runs all the way down. They've got it roped off, and everything well, slopes towards the water. Here. The OB line is what? Is that like 18 feet from the basket? Good-looking shot from Nate. Oh, it's a little early. Look at this thing work, Liz. Whew, that is a scary buddy. He's got halfway down that hill. Here's Dave Felberg and Dave, I'm looking to really, oh, oh and we're looking over at the Gosh, next hole. Like these, all three of these holes have to deal with this little creek that's lined in OB. And here's Dave Felberg. Let's see if he's got his shot under control. He needs this birdie to get off. Oh, that's got to hit something, Liz. That is, How about the basket? That is fast. Oh, he's, that's OB. No, he's actually, oh, he, he is, is OB, OB across. So. You bet, Billy. You know, from there, he may be able to still save a three. He is pretty close to the basket from where he's going to take his lie at. Not what he was needing coming off of that seven off pre two holes ago. Now, yeah. here's the leader, Ricky Wysocki, as another one of the women in the lead card splashes down. Well, now, Ricky Wysocki did just watch. I mean, none of the guys are really down here for an easy two. So it's going to be interesting to see if he chooses to play this hole aggressively or just kind of lay off and take a three and move on. Well, oh, he's definitely early. saw that off early. Well, well he's got a tough stop. up shot from over there. We're going to let him come down. This is number 12, 285 feet of danger. Well, Liz, you are right. I mean, he, 
He's not only just 80 feet off, he's 80 feet left. That was a horrible kick. Yeah, you know, I just saw him take a look at his shot. He threw both hands up in the air like, what am I going to do from here? Now, we just calculated up his course. He is two strokes off the lead, who is Ricky Waisaki right now. He's got to be thinking, just get down there for a three, give myself a putt so I can get out of here. Well, a lot of these guys, uh, David Feldberg, for instance, he can tell you what's going on with everybody in the group and where everybody stands. I don't think Cam so much keeps up with the score of the other players. With him, it's just a battle of course. This is a Whoa, dangerous it's up in the shot. Leaves. It's up in the leaves, but it's right next to the bucket. Oh, it's that's gotta wrong. sit down, it's gotta sit down. That was a great shot. I mean, that was creative, and he had just enough speed on it to slow it down before it creeped into the water. Just enough lucky speed, you're right. <laughs> Oh boy, Billy, what an ugly lie. All he wants to do out of this hole is get a three, and he's, he's up and down, and... Whoa, that's, that's gotta sit down, too. Oh. All right. And what, yeah. some knee-jerking shots here. Well, that'll keep Ricky Wasaki if he can tap that little putt in at 42, and Cam in second at 40 under par. They're going. You know, right now they're pausing, they're taking a break for the women. That's awesome. That's a great focus from Val because Dave didn't even know she was there and he was just in the middle of sort of a rant and rave. Yeah, you bet. You know, I just heard word from the scorekeeper that Sarah Stanhope has actually moved back up into second to challenge Valerie for her lead, although it is a comfortable lead. Well, they're on hole 13. We are on hole 12. And this is just, this, this is a stretch of the hole that you really want to come out of here at least two down but one Aaron shot, and you could lose one or two strokes in this little stretch, Liz. Oh, you bet, Billy. I mean, that's what these shots are. They are. I mean, you have to stay in bounds on these. Well, these are really tight, close shots here, and Dave's informed Nate that he's out, and Davis uh, walked away. He's a little, little disgusted Dave, I mean, with his lie, I guess. Yeah, you know, and it's hard to see, because I, he can't actually see from the deep pad where it is that he went out at. He can only judge by where the disc lands and what he hears it hit on, on its way out. Oh, there was a spotter there that told him where it went out. All right, it looks like all the girls are right nestled underneath the bucket and Nate is gonna make his way up to his shot for his birdie attempt. Well, Nate's trying to make the surge back. He did not have a good front nine. I mean, he only shot two under, whereas everybody else shot five or seven under. This is a big putt for Nate. I tell you what, he is getting better as the day goes on. This morning was a little bit shaky, but since then, he seemed to pull himself back into this game. Well, he was down by five when they made the turn. If he can make this putt, he can get within two. Again, you know, when he's putting, he doesn't want to hear any chains real close to him, so give the girls a space, let them move on. Oh boy, this looks like an awkward putt. He's got one foot above the other one, straddle putt on a side hill. Yeah, it's just the visual of that yellow rope that makes your butt pucker, though. Uh, not Nate Doss's. There we go. Nice two by Nate Doss. Well, he started out slow this morning, but Nate is known as an all-day player. Oh, boy, there's some controversy on this putt. Now, we, we were down here, but we're not going to mess with the players. Dave Felberg here has a chance to get a circle three here with an OB penalty, but, you know, he needs it. He's fighting for it. All right, canned it out for a circle three, but I know he's disappointed with that three. He wanted a two. Boy, was he grinding over that 20-footer. He has got a couple guys just going off in his head, and everybody's giving him his space. Ricky Wasaki tapping his three in. Cam Todd moving in after an incredible upshot. Tap his three in. That's hole number 12. This is the lead card, and we're gonna stay with him for one more hole this morning. All right, well, we've moved over to hole 13. We're gonna stay with this group through this three pack, and this is just a dangerous hole, 238 feet, and it's right there, Liz. You bet, and Nate Doss has the pad now. I haven't seen him have the pad much in this first round of the day. Oh. He stopped early on his flight to the basket. Yeah, if he kicks the other way, he's OB. Yeah, he's you know barely what? halfway there, Liz. Well, I know right now he's probably thinking, man, I could have went one of two ways. Well, he's 40 under par. He's tied with this young man, there Cam Todd. There you go, that Todd. looks smooth by Cam Todd. He's got to nestle right underneath the bucket. Oh, that's what you're looking for, Liz. I believe a comment was thrown there. So he's going to get himself one stroke closer to Ricky Wasaki, put the pressure on him, and he's going to separate himself again from Nate. Here's David Feldberg. It's only 230.
38 feet, but oh, and David is just. He seems like he is. <laughs> I mean, he's been struggling this whole time playing up and down. Yesterday in our interview, it seems like he's he feels he's playing mediocre golf. Um, he's just not playing uh, smoothly and, and well, some, confidently. Sometimes, uh, you know, it's just one of them days and every sound seems to interrupt you. We've seen Dave stop two or three times. We heard him have a very lengthy conversation with himself on hole number 10. And it's just a battle out here. These are tough, tough courses, Liz. Well, that shot looks good, Billy. I tell you what, that's going to be right next to Cam's. Maybe oh. even closer. Wow. That thing really tried to stand up two or three times and roll away. and. He wouldn't give up on it. He kept looking at it and he kept willing it to lay down. Don't turn around and walk off the tee. You never know what can All right, happen. Billy, here's Ricky Wysocki, and I think this is really a story of the weekend. He's nominated for Ricky of the Year, and he is just crushing. He's <laughs> almost aces hole 13, but he's going to leave himself with a really tricky putt down there. Yeah, he's not but about 15 feet. He should have no problems. We'll get on up now and see how Nate handles his drive. Well, Nate with a, just a really fortunate kick, Liz. Yeah, that's right. All I can do here is think I'm going to get under the bucket for a three. Oh, he's done that. Oh, boy, that sloping green is so dangerous. You know, I would call this a severe slope. Let's go check out these guys and see if they can get any twos out of this hole. Ricky Wasaki here for a birdie. Oh, yeah, you know, he, he has a chance here to get a two, but what a death putt. Not a problem. Looking down at the water's edge, Nate Dolph's going to move in and go around back with that air and drive. He's going to get himself a three. And then David Felberg and Cam Todd move into top their bars out, and Nate's going to cause this group a star frame list. Yeah, it looks like those guys are playing a CTP contest on this hole. Well, Nate's sitting at 40 under. He had pulled himself within two of Ricky. That putt will get Ricky three ahead of him. All right, Nate Dawes, pretty opportunity. This is actually for par. All right, not a problem. All right, seems like there's a little bit of controversy here, especially on the last hole. Well, Dave's been having a conversation and nobody would talk to him, so he came right to us to see if he could get some kind of feedback. He is grinding out here. All right, Cam, pretty easy routine. Birdie for him. And Dave's I tell you, Dave, Dave soon. got lucky. He didn't see what happened to his disc down here. We both watched it almost pick up and roll. I tell you what, he should be happy. This stayed right near the bucket. Well, this has been the lead card Sunday morning, and this is the first annual PDGA Championships. This is a magnificent place. We are on the W.R. Jackson course, and it is brutal. This is a beautiful little stretch of birdie holes. We're going to get back over now, and we'll bring you some more action a little bit from the final 10 of the first annual. PDGA Championships. Gotta go, gotta throw is your one-stop resource for golf disc and accessories. Carrying a full line of golf discs from every manufacturer, bags, baskets, and apparel. Talk to their knowledgeable staff when shopping and get advice on what type of disc you should get for your style of play. If it's experience you're looking for, they have it. class collection yet? I have. I got all seven. 
that's what we saw at the room. Flash DVD. Start your collection today. I've got mine. It's that easy. He's looking at a turbo. It tends to go in a lot. Clash DVD. Have you started your collection? I have mine. That's got a chance. Clash DVD. Have you started your collection? I got mine. All right, we've come to the candy shop. I see a lot of plastic, a lot of clothes. What's going on in here? Liz, this is our pro shop. As you can see, we have quite a bit of disc golf merchandise in here. <laughs> I'd say so. We've tried to make it a goal to carry a little bit of every manufacturer's equipment, and you know, we do pretty well. There's so many manufacturers nowadays that it's hard to do that, but we've got discs of every type, both in the bins below, up here, bags, clothes. Straps, artwork, hats, I mean, there's everything in here. We try to put everything we can think of in here. It's pretty much full. Well, hey, we're golfers. We like to be prepared and be in style. And we try to put a little bit more stuff in here every year, so we just have it packed to the gills. Well, all right, we're done with the pro shop. Let's go take a look outside. Come on, Liz. Liz, this is a training area back here. We've got a bunch of different baskets. Players can come back here and warm up. All right, I know, yeah, I see somebody warming up there uh, right now, and I see a bunch of different baskets out there from different manufacturers. They're right, and they're all different colors, too, so you can, uh, we can make up games where you go to different baskets, different colored baskets. We've also got a nice deck out here. People can come out and hang out under the umbrella, like we are now. <laughs> yeah, training. exactly. And uh, hang out and have lunch out here. There's wireless internet here at the building. Um, right over here, we have whole one of the Ed Hedrick course. Over here, the W.R. Jackson course. In front of the building, the Jim Warner course. Well, all right, this center is right in the middle of all three courses. Stop in here and cool down in between rounds. That's right. We invite all of PDJ members to come here. We built this place for the PDJ members. We've got a uh, public-private partnership with Columbia County, Georgia. They love disc golf, and we love being here. So all right. Well, PDJ I... members, come see us. All right, Brian Graham, thank you so much for the tour. Yes, thank you. Appreciate anytime. it. <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is the inaugural PDJ Championships, the 2011 PDJ Championships. In front of you is the lead group of the men's professional group. They are uh, going to play 10 holes now to decide the winner. The winner of this group will be your national champion for 2011. Guys, we wish you the best of luck. Have a great time out there. And folks, we have Ricky Wysocki. We have Nate Das. We have Cam Todd. And we have Will Schustrick, your current national champion. Yeah. Should mention that Nate's your current world champion. Too. That's all right. All right, guys, good luck out there. Thanks. Have a blast. Ricky, you get the card. Well, Liz, well, we are about to witness history. We are going to see who the right first here, annual PDJ champion so is. You're right, Billy, and you know, all these guys have been working hard all weekend long in this humid weather down here at the IBGC in Georgia. Well, I'll tell you, the young man, he's vying for Rookie of the Year, and if he can hold on for 10 more holes, he's going to lock that, that up. He's sitting at 45 under par, and now he's on the tee. He is from Fort Mill, South Carolina, via... Medina, Ohio, and this is young Ricky Wasaki. That's right, Billy. I mean, he was tied with Nate Doss going into the final round, and I tell you what, he got 11 birdies that last round to oh. give himself a two-stroke lead all by himself. That was an unconventional line that worked out, Billy. Boy, that was a super skinny line. He took the window pane on the left side. That is impressive, Liz. Nate Doss now, he sits two back of Ricky Wysocki. He had an up and down round, but again, he was able to dig deep when it needed. He's sitting in this final 10. Well, Ricky Wysocki has never been in this position. Nate Doss is in this position every Sunday. I look at these guys to take the big oh, high early. line, but you know, they're trying to cut the corner, Billy. And that is trouble right Maybe there. That's that. going to be, he could still possibly get out of there and get up and down for his easy par, but. I don't know. He's, got, he's going to have to throw an overhead shot to get out of that. Well, here's Cam Todd. Cam's one of the quickest players out here. You and they're all taking the end. He's actually going to try to make his disc work a little bit. That's oh, definitely he... a placement shot, but he's far enough right that he's probably going to be able to see the bucket. Well, the stump only cost him maybe 10 feet, and it actually shot him over to where he's got a good, clear footing for his next shot. New to the top card uh, so far is Will Shoestrick, and he's the defending national champion. He won the USDGC last year. Well, he's only five back. We got 10 holes to go, and you want to see some long shots in the woods. Just see, watch this kid. Now, there's a shot that we expected to see, but... Oh, yeah, way to go, Will Shoestrick. That's amazing. 
Will is a good 80 to 100 feet past the rest of the guys. This is hole number one. This is the final 10 of the pro men from the first annual PDGA Championships. Well, you see Cam, well, he loves that birdie bag on a humid day. Yeah, you're right, Billy. I mean, everybody loves a birdie bag on a humid day. This is sticky out here. It's disgusting. And I mean, they rely so much on their grip as to how they throw every shot. Well, and most of these guys have gone to the new edge. Play oh boy, that's it. We're screaming up through there, Liz. Right. As long as it's stable enough to get back, it should drop get right by the bucket. Great shot from Cam. He's probably 22, 23 feet for his birdie putt. Oh boy, does he, I mean, we're looking at him and the direction he's looking at the basket and that shul is over his head. There's no low line to get through there. Well, you know, he could maybe pop a roller and get it to do some action. I don't know if a sidearm with the ankles enough to get up there. No, I don't think so either. I did see him earlier in the first round throw one of those sky rollers that, you know, went way up in the air and touched down and just ran out of speed when it got to the basket. Well, here's how the big boys handle trouble. That's what he's done. He's looking for the sky roller, Liz. It's got to stay straight, but I mean, he's out and he's up. That's just fine. He can get a par out of that. Great attempt. All right, young man nominated for Rookie of the Year, Billy. Is Looky he? here, he is lining up a standstill sidearm. Whew, I tell you what, he throws both shots very well. He has a great solid backhand and a forehand. That's too low, Liz. It's got to get up. Big skip. Oh, got eaten up by the grass. But again, he has a lead. Boy, Will has mashed this thing. He almost got to the road. He's got a pretty easy up and down here if he can just hit the shot, Liz. That's right, Billy. He worked hard to get in, the, get in this position, and we know why, judging his first shot here. Oh, that is just a little, a little bit short. It's going to leave my huge putt to can out a birdie, but... Small mistake there. Boy, Nate was disgusted with that tree. He said, that's the tree I hit. Yeah, you know, he made a great shot to get out of there. This is not going to give him a, even a solid birdie attempt, but it will. He has an easy par attempt here. I mean, he's looking at, I don't know, maybe an 80-foot shot to get up near the bucket. Well, he's too behind Saki. He's too ahead of Cam Todd. And we know Cam's got a birdie. The butt is up in the air. It looks like it's, oh, it has a chance. Hit the top of the back the basket, Billy. Wow. That's not a putt, Liz. That's a chip. Okay, we've got Ricky Waisaki here. Now this is his birdie attempt to further his lead. It's up in the air. Oh, it's definitely right. Didn't even catch any metal. This is for a birdie, and this was a mistake here. He should be up under the bucket. Oh, you bet after a drive like that. It's out of his hand and in the bucket. Nice start for the defending champ. All right, we've got Cam Todd stepping up here after an incredible upshot to get to this point. Well, this is money in the bank. Absolutely, Billy. You called it. The birdie to answer the cut, answer the call. We're gonna let him tap out as the crowd is walking all over young Ricky Wasaki. Well, maybe they just trust him that he'll make this putt no matter what. Well, 10 feet, they say he's a pro, he's got concentration. They're trying to get in position because they don't want to miss a shot. He gets his par and here's young Nate Doss tapping in his par. That's one hole down, on to the next hole. Well, we've made our way halfway through the final 10. Young Ricky Wasaki, he is not cracking, sitting at 48 under. We're still on the Jackson course, Liz, and this is another demanding haul. Oh boy, Billy, I hear thunder in the background here. I hope we don't get another rain delay. Well, this is number 14, 616 feet, a par four. Very and challenging hole. You know, the green on this hole is just as challenging as the fairway. Oh, and Cam has just laced it. Wow, Cam, that is a great wow. drive. Now on the tee is young Ricky Wasaki, looking to become a rookie that's major right. winner. He has a four-stroke lead right now. He's just got to play safe. He doesn't oh, that's do high. anything crazy. Uh, he knows it. All right, that's 
quite the gap to take. He did get nestled in between some trees there. It's a tight clumping of trees. He's gonna have to work around it. But. Yeah, that's gonna be a tough, tough shot. Now Nate Doss on the tee. Nate's in second right now by himself, four strokes back. Oh, that, that plastic better get stable quick. And it does, Liz. He airmails Cam. Wow. Wow, Nate Doss wow. gonna be able to actually run at that green. Well, Will shoot. <laughs> oh boy, he's got to, you know, pull himself back here. He's got a solid fourth place, but he's one stroke away from Cam and two strokes away from Doss here. He has a chance to still move up and up into the upper rankings of this final ten. Well, that's the problem with these big power arms. You can eagle these holes, or you can double them, as we just oh, saw. Oh boy, Will Schuster just landed one right in the woods, not more than a quarter of the way down the fairway. Mm, it looks like no eagle on this one. Boy. Will Schuster is finding some trouble on this final 10. Well, we had hoped the hour and a half delay was going to help him some, maybe relax. But, you know, he's in the final nine. He is a defending champ. That was his goal this morning, I'm sure, to at least get here and give himself a chance. Yeah, he played a phenomenal, phenomenal fourth round. And choosing to play smart there, wise move by Will Schuster. Well, it's a nice 32-foot putt. And we've got it documented last night. Will was throwing lids 134 miles an hour. That's right. Oh, my gosh. Oh, that got a little misdirected at the top. Boy, there. I wish uh, I wish my shots would hit a limb and continue forward like that. Absolutely. Well, young Ricky Wasaki, he is in a little cluster of trees. and. Well, yeah, I mean, this is a par four, Billy. He can, you know, theoretically throw it halfway there and just take his time getting a, getting a par. But obviously, he doesn't seems like there's no challenge because he went right for the green. Oh, hits a tree instead of having a 45 footer. He's got a 22 foot, three inch putt That's for a bird. Well, Cam has a couple of different options from where he sits at. This is a great drive. He's going to take his time, check out the green. Boy, look at Cam taking his time. He is really surveying this. He knows he's getting close and he oh, wants yeah. to put a push on these last few holes. Absolutely. But, you know, once he decides, this is really when he's the fastest player. Well, when he's, he's ready, he steps behind that disc and throws. He's a confident player. He sees the shot and generally he throws the shot. Well, Billy, let's talk about the dangers on the green here. This is a terribly sloped, sloped green. Well, yes. That's exactly why Wasaki came in on the right side he got a great kick but if you come in and you hit at any angle you're going to have about a 30 to 40 footer back uphill and if you come in with some air there's no telling how far down over you could go cam looks like he's taking the anheuser line just wants it to land soft it's a great looking shot it's got to get down liz oh yeah it's got to drop out of the air fast oh liz that's every bit of a 40 footer coming back he did there's will schuster now that's got to get down yeah that's going to be a tough putt. He's going to be under that tree. Oh, boy, he is slumped shoulders. Liz, what a spectacular drive from Nate. I mean, this hole is five or 616 feet. He's inside of 100 feet, and these are alleys. That's right, and you know, he's got the biggest arms watching him on this spectator round, and they are even amazed at his shot. All right, it's up. It looks like he's definitely trying to play this one safe. Oh, smart play by Nate. He's going to have a drop in birdie here on number 14. Well, what a tricky lie that Cam has here. He is right in front of a down limb. It looks like his back legs are going to touch it, or he's going to try to straddle, sit on it. I'm not sure what he is doing, but it looks awkward, and it doesn't look like it's going to make for a Not a problem. Confident putt. Putt. The best putter on the planet. Just watch this. All right, Cam Todd. Oh, it's the front of the cage. Oh, up. He's no, gonna, Liz. Oh, it's trying to get back to him, but, you know, I believe he'll make the next one. Well, he is still out. After mm, the dreaded part. You, you're still out, bro. Not the sentence you ever want to hear. See, not this one, though. This one, Cam, it doesn't have that big down tree to deal with. He's going to have a much better footing than this. It's for a par. I can hear the thunder rumbling, Liz. We could be horns on at any minute. All right, there it is. There's the Cam Todd putt we were waiting for. A solid par from Cam. That, that tough stance is really what drug him in there. And now with a great kick, Ricky Wasaki looking to get a, a birdie here. 
pizza. Oh, and it hit the chastity belt. He looks amazed that he didn't make that putt. Well, he's gonna take a four, he's gonna stay at 48. He's still okay. Yeah, it's not gonna hurt him too much. All right, it looks like Will Schuster's getting ready to go here. He, um, he's definitely suffering here. All right, Will Schuster. Solid shot from Will right there. That'll give him his four, and you can see he is grinding. Wow, did Nate play this hole differently than he played the last round? Well, Nate gets to 45. That pulls him within three of Saki, and we've still got four holes to go. Well, Liz, it has been a great weekend. It's been humid. We've had rain, we've had wind, and we've had some great golf in the advanced division, in the women's division, and now in the open men's division. That's right, on a course like this, it brings out every single emotion on almost every single hole, Billy. This is a tough place to play. The people that can win here are people that can golf. All right, this is our final hole. This is hole 18 of the Steady Ed course. Well, Nate has three birdies in a row to get within one. He knows this hole, he knows he's got to penetrate out. It's a very cerebral hole. Yeah, I mean, it's the challenge here is getting it to go straight up the hill and out the gap. The green on this hole is no easy thing at all. It's early. Oh boy, that's way early. And he kicked down about what, halfway up that hill. Well, he can reach the green from there. He's got the angle, but he's yeah, on the tree. And this is a big shot here. If Wasaki can get out, he's going to be the first PDGA national champion. That's right, we'll see what his nerves are made of right here. All he has to do is throw it clean, give himself a par run, and he is good to go. Oh, that's oh, ripped, that's Liz. Rip. That is ripped, Liz. He is coming in around the back side of that tree. Wow. He almost threw it to the front steps of the IDGC itself. Well, you're looking at the first PDGA champion. What a great, great weekend. Here's Cam Todd to finish his round off in the final 10. What a great show he's put on for us. Yeah, you bet, Billy. Sneaky, sneaky, just out to the other side. He'll be able to get a birdie from there, I yeah, guarantee. Yeah, he's on the good side, Billy. Will Shoestrike again, just battling out through this final 10. Oh, Will has ripped this thing. He is just, he's going to airmail Wasaki. Wow. He might be over there in the lunch area at the Dan St Stork Roddick commemorative area. We're going to make our way up the hill. As you can see the gallery, it's been a great weekend. And Ricky Wasaki, he's going to bring it home. Boy, Liz, an unbelievable weekend. A special weekend here at the IDGC. This is where disc golf's home is, and this is their first major. That's right, and this is, they're going to crown a national champions from this tournament. Boy, you are right. right now challenging for that What title, a tough but... lie, Liz. He is on that tree. He could hurt himself here if he's not careful. Well, if he, you, you bet. He's got a, you can see. a big hyzer. He's going to have to step away off that. And then once you step off of the line and the stability that you're comfortable with, I mean. Well, now he's brought the tree happen. into play, not only on his backhand, but if he's thinking about it, he could throw the disc right into it. I mean, this is a tough, tough shot. There's Nate Doss. What a great shot. Well, Liz, he is getting over. If he gets around, he gets to the other side of the trees. That's going to give him an opportunity for a three. Nate will not go away. That's right. Okay, Cam here. Now, this is the, his drive. Uh, I'll tell you. A good kick to the good side of that tree. I mean, it's not that hard to get to, from there to the bucket, but. If you're relatively new to the sport, you've read about Cam, and now you've got to see exactly why everybody calls him the greatest putter on the planet. Oh boy, Billy, this is a really exciting moment for Ricky Wysocki, nominated for Ricky of the Year, walking up to his open first open major. I believe so. Nate will not give this thing up. If Ricky gets up and down for his birdie, Nate has still got a chance. And Liz, I could even say this, but we could have more golf. Oh my goodness. Well, at least the weather's going to cooperate because I see a little bit of blue sky up there. Oh, you know it is gorgeous right now. It actually feels great. There's Ricky, Ricky Wasaki with the biggest shot of his young career. Sorry, it looks like he's going to almost take a jump putt approach to this. I'm not. Not a bad idea. He wants to keep that putter. He doesn't want to put a sharp edge up there on the screen. The screen is a dangerous runaway. But it, look, it looks like he's almost lining up for a backdoor attempt. There's some more to deal with on that side, but there's a mound between him and the bucket. 
Oh, that well was done. fabulous. And he sets it under the bucket. And now Nate Dawson's going to have to make one tough putt, or we've got a national champion. Well, Will Schuster threw it so far down there, he is almost to the building. Spectators had no idea they were walking in front of him. Unbelievable shot by Will. Nice shot, Will Schuster also laying up and out driving the basket. All right, here we go. This is Nate Doss. Now, he, this is for a solid second place. He's not going to give anything up. He is still a number one player. Yeah, Billy thought he had a chance still to push it into sudden death, but that part job by Wasaki. Oh, he attempted a putt. He gave it a bit, but it flew right on by. Well, he's still going to hold on to second place as Cam and Will were behind him, but young Ricky Wasaki. Oh, do you think he's starting to tingle yet? Oh, my gosh. If I'm tingling enough for him. This is exciting. Cam Todd finishing up. There he goes. He's finished up his round. A great tournament. Saki now. All right, I'm now standing with Heather Damron, who has also got herself a national title. You have won the inaugural event at the PDGA Championships. You got to feel good right now. I feel great. Um, had a lot of fun this weekend, and I'm really excited. Yeah, she beat out, there were six women in this competition, and she has risen to the top. You have the highest rating out there. Does this mean it's time to move up? Oh, no, no, definitely not. I definitely <laughs> not. <laughs> I was in no way proud of my putting this weekend, but the uh, driving and up shots were working for me, so uh, I've got some work to do. Well, hey, you played well <laughs> enough to win this weekend. You have a national title now. Congratulations from all of us at Clash DVD. And hey, if it's all that it takes is putting, go get that practice yeah, right. green. Okay. That's Heather Dameron, your national <laughs> champion. Thanks. Well, all right, we have come to the Cloud9 post round interview with our amateur champion, Charlie. Charlie, can you tell us how you got to be amateur champion? Yeah, um, I had a lot of good rounds. Uh, first round was, I mean, I just shot well above my rating. I just tried to keep it in the middle, keep it safe, not get caught in the woods. And sure, I mean, you played so well that you had how many stroke lead going into today's I final a, round? I had a seven stroke lead. That's pretty comfortable, right? Right, you would think so. Yeah, hey. <laughs> and so, and then I, we go to the first hole and I take a birdie and the, the two guys take a place, take a five. Uh, then I go to the next hole, star par, and then... So you're increasing your lead as you Right, go. right, so I increase it to a nine and then it start to collapse. Just like mentally, uh, physical ability, everything just kind of faltered on me. And so I started taking bogey, double bogey, triple bogey, bogey. Now, so, at, at the same time, I understand that your opponents, while you're kind of playing right. not are, well, are they're playing, playing great. phenomenally. They right? are knocking uh, birdies out left and right. The guy, <laughs> the guy chasing me, Will Taylor, he was knocking out a birdie every time I hit a bogey or a double bogey. So he was gaining two, three strokes a hole. <laughs> so it was really, really bad. And so then we got down to um, hole 18, last hole. And I look at, um, we had a scorekeeper with us and the score read, uh, I was at 23 down or 24 down and Will was at 23 down, something like that. Only one stroke lead. And uh, Will laces his drive down the middle. I mean, exactly what you want to see on 18, the perfect. Sure, yeah. And. Um, I went with a flick roller, which I put about 60 feet away from the pin earlier. It was a pretty safe shot. I, I guess nerves, anxiety just got to me and turned it over. It rolls over in the woods, probably 80 feet off the fairway. I have no lie, nothing. No, we no, all know that. Yeah, if you get I, off the fairway at these courses, yeah, what happens? It's, it's just nothing. You just pitch out. It's the safe <laughs> thing to do. But, you know, I just thought maybe I could squeeze a little flick buzz out there through the middle. So I just pretty much, I might as well have closed my eyes and thrown. <laughs> and then it just lands out in the middle, 95 feet away from the basket. So I'm thinking, that's great. I'll just lay up for a four because I don't want to go for it and blow past it and then end up losing by a stroke sure, when I can have a playoff. That's a tricky green if I'm not wrong. You right, know, the basket's yeah, hidden, it, it's downhill. Right, downhill. So any bad rolls, you're 50 feet away. Sure, yeah, easy. Right, and so... I have about a 10-foot gap between trees, and a tree is leaning in the middle like this. So 
probably 10 feet up the tree, there's a gap and it's probably about this wide. So I was just like, just trying to do a safe layup through there, kind of like a turny run at a basket to where it'll sure, be all yeah. right. Just ended up sinking it. Oh man, no. And so, and then we go in and find out that the, gore that the guy that was keeping the score for us added the score wrong and I actually won by two. But in my mind, that 95 footer was the win. Sure, yeah, absolutely. And so, and so I just lost it. And it was a great tournament. I, every, every card I was on was just awesome, man. It was just a fun time. Well, I know your nerves must have been going crazy that entire time and everybody else I thinking, still we can get just back. Recovered, yeah. Well, hey, so am national champion. You yeah, moving up? Had a great Next time. tournament you're playing pro? I've been playing pro the last three tournaments, so uh, probably just keep doing that and see what happens. All right. Well, we are happy to welcome you in the, into a championship run. <laughs> well, this is Charlie Coleman, your PDGA championship amateur division champion. Well, all right, I'm standing here with Valerie Jenkins, who just won the PDGA championships the first time this event has ever been played. Two majors back to back. Holy cow. I mean, you are the woman in disc golf, but how does it feel? <laughs> uh, you know, it's it was crazy what a battle it was in the woods. Yeah, coming down the, the last round this morning, it was me and the two side arming Sarahs. <laughs> yeah. And so you know, in the woods, you never know what's gonna happen. And they battled and they battled and you know, it was still a battle through this whole nine. So it was, it was awesome. And now you're in the final 10, actually, this the final, this 10, final yeah. 10 holes, which is new to this tournament. Uh, <laughs> um, can you tell us a little bit about these rain delays? Did that mess up your game? I mean, how, what does that do to you as a player when you're trying to play your best game and then you get stuck with a rain delay? Yeah, it's a little weird, especially when it's two rain delays in a final 10. And <laughs> you know, I don't know, you just have to keep yourself motivated. You can't get too sluggish. You know, you, you gotta still keep playing and keeping that mind frame. So, I don't know. I think it's the experience of playing in a lot of rain delays here in Augusta. Oh, it rains uh, here a lot, apparently. Yeah, and so, <laughs> yeah, it, you just get used to it. And, you gotta stay motivated. Well, cool. This is our two majors in a row winner, Valerie Jenkins. And can you tell us what you're gonna be doing next? Relaxing. This oh, is like relaxing. The, big, <laughs> the biggest tournament, and you know, it's the end of it all. We'll be playing Players' Cup. Hopefully, I get in. I don't know. Find out. But good it's words. The end of the season, so we're we're excited about that. Awesome. Well, this is Valerie Jenkins, the woman to beat in disc golf. <laughs> Well, all right, I'm standing here with the winner of the inaugural event at the PD, for the PDGA Championships. This is Ricky Waisaki, the winner. Ricky, what are you feeling right now? I mean, I'm, I'm still kind of feeling it. I mean, Nate pushed me to the wire the whole time and uh, came down the last shot pretty much. So um, he, he played well, too. And, uh, well, that's right. I mean, every time he threw it up there, you answered his call or you made a putt, you made a good drive. Yep. Now, you are putting your foot in the door here, winning a major as a nominator, nominated person for Rookie of the Year. Yeah, it should be uh, hopefully a good uh, <laughs> qualifier. <laughs> qualifier for the Rookie of the Year. <laughs> and uh, we'll hopefully uh, I'll, I'll get that too. It'll be great. <laughs> it will be great. I know it was really exciting to watch you play all weekend long. This Thank is you. Ricky Waisaki, your PDGA champion. Yeah, Ricky. <laughs> Well, we have had a big weekend here. We've had rain, we've had rain delays. Oh, we've two of them. Plenty of sunshine and plenty of humidity. But now it's finally over and we've got four new PDGA champions. That's right, Billy. Our amateur women's champion is Heather Dameron. She's from Asheville, North Carolina, and she really put it together this weekend. One of the locals, Charlie Coleman, really put it together and had an up and down battle, but held on to get his name on there. Oh, absolutely right. That was exciting. Valerie Jenkins, a two-time national champion now. And a two major winner, back-to-back -back weekends. Wow, how stressful is that? And the young man, Ricky Wasaki, bringing the title home, now from Fort Mill, South Carolina via Medina, Ohio, and I'm going to say Rookie of the Year, Liz. Oh, I think there's no doubt in anybody's mind that Ricky Wysocki has cemented his name, at least on one trophy that I know of. That's for sure. For Class DVD, I'm Billy Crump. And I'm Liz Carr. Stay tuned for more coverage on the PDGA.com.